right, welcome to Training Gay Podcast. I'm John DePaulo. This is my buddy, Johnny. Yes, Kyrgyz. Welcome back, everyone. Glad you're with us. Uh, we're going to talk about today um, the stretching and corrective tips because there's a lot of different uh, there's a lot of different tips that I have learned from you, John, and I wanted to talk about that because it has benefited me. But I'm also still in the process of learning this too, yeah. and I think it's really good for the audience because as I get to learn more, the more I feel everyone can benefit from. Of it's so it's so valuable. So let's talk about. Um, some some stretching and corrective tips and the differences between dynamic and static stretching. I like to start and say stretching has improved my life too. I used to be so tight by my neck and I would only be focused on my neck, but I didn't look at the muscles surrounding the neck that the tightness might be traveling down and possibly to open it up from there. For example, I have pain down here. I used to foam on my lats, stretch my lats, and strangely, the nerve was not compressed on in my neck no more, so there was no more pain point is try to kill it where, it where it inserts you want to kill a plant don't pull a leaf pull the whole fucking root so getting back to the stretching this dynamic and the static what is the difference what does dynamic sound like <laughs> tnt explosive right so what's the closest thing to being explosive warming up it's movement this is basically a stretch that involves movement it's dynamic uh so if i did a hamstring stretch a static stretch would be just that a pause, Toe touches. A, po a pause in a hole for maybe t 10 seconds or more. It's actually three seconds or more. It's considered a static stretch. But when you're doing that, what are you teaching the muscle to do? To freeze up, to pause, to hold. So if you're static held and you stretch before a workout, knowing you're about to go out there to war on the battlegrounds and annihilate the muscle, even just stimulate the muscle, Aren't those two contradictions? You're saying also, is it something that you all can keep it warm is what they say, is keep the muscle warm, prepare it for what it has to the do battle. with what you're saying? But is it also putting more blood flow through it, making sure that, you know, clearly you're not going to go and squat, you know, 300 pounds. No. Right? Without Maybe. stretching beforehand because you could, you might tear something, right? So are you warming up and quote unquote, I guess, lubricating that area? You're cueing the muscle in. You're dialing the muscle in. Okay, if I want to put eggs on the stove and cook eggs, I need a pilot first, right? So you're cueing in the stove. You're cueing in your brain and your muscle. So when you warm up with a dynamic movement, because there's movement, your muscle's loosening up, it's opening up, and it's causing heat because it's movement. Just like a cal the definition of a calorie is heat. When you put in your body, it ignites more metabolism, right? That's the way people should warm up is a dynamic movement. Now, what about the people like, myself should <laughs> well they should right even myself i need to get better at stretching but i used to when i had more time i'd be able to go in there 10 minutes before and stretch okay. but let's say i i don't have as much time as i need to and i know that i need to do something quick in order to stretch before i do something like that okay that's, that's, gonna, that's gonna take up you know about 10 minutes it'll take up something like a minute or two a minute or two yeah what could you do you're saying yeah what could i do for instance <clears throat> i'm doing legs for that day i get it what I would do is this, it's real simple. You gotta know a variety of ways to stretch. Say you're doing legs and you, you're using a, uh, a resistance band. Yeah. Stretch your hamstring, right? But an animated way. You lay down on the ground, lasso the band around, pull, create tension, create length at the hamstring and move it up and down just for movement. Open up the hip capsule. Maybe you use a tube band and put it around your knees. You do that to me. Lay to your oh. side here like, like you're sleeping and do clamshells to work the, the outer, the medial glute. I remember when that, that was feeling. That pocket right here, people who don't know about the medial glute, it's when the girl's standing by the bus and from the side, it looks like it's a perfect butt and that guy continues to creep behind to see if the, the bottom looks as good as the side. Well, that's what brought him there was the side. So the medial glute, it's also not just responsible for someone looking sexy, for being more powerful. You should generate all your power, bro, from your glutes. I learned that from you too, especially from doing glute ham raises, but doing it in a way that I had not seen it been done as much right. with the two kettlebells that you place on your thighs. Oh, as resistance, right? Yeah, it was. Amazing. it's fantastic because I, I really have gained a lot more in my glutes and gave me, like you were saying, more strength. Are you talking about the static one when I pressed on with the kettlebells on the inner part? Yes. That's static. That's usually towards the end. That we do that just to open up the hip flexors more because they're so stubborn. Mine are so tight like that. Always. <laughs> you got you to pry them open. Mm whatever it takes. The kettlebell was a little more 
then because functional will be even harder. So the extra resistance will weigh you down. That makes Not sense. tear, open things up. <laughs> I feel you on that. I mean, what do you th- why do you think it's so important though? Aside from injury, talk about longevity now. Stretching? Yeah. Well, did you ever own a backyard before? A backyard? Yeah. No. You know, people personally who own backyards? Yes. You ever hear of a hose? When, oh, water the garden? <laughs> you ever see some asshole purposely when you're watering the garden, they're behind you going, I'll get them. And they take the whole hose and they bend it and you lose pressure. Does water keep coming out? No. Put your head down like, come on, you dummy. Give me some power, right? Same thing with your body. When mm. you sleep all night long, the reason you should foam roll the minute you wake up is because your muscles shorten. Is that a good thing? Not really. When something shorten, you sit at a desk for nine to five, you're sitting just like this, with your foot pre- you're pressing into the ground, right? Maybe not generating power because you're writing something down or typing something up, but your, sh- your hamstring is shortening. When it gets short, you, you have an inadequate supply of blood flow because the fascia kind of gets like all crinkled up. Mm. You want to lengthen it. Like when your mom used to iron your shirts. Why is she ironing? She's getting all the creases out. She's creating length so, so the, the shirt fits properly, right? That's where foam rolling comes in. But stretching, once you foam roll, it's causing the muscle to elongate and create length, create distance. That registers me. It's like a shriveled up or being in the it's water like a shrinky too thing, all shrivel up. Well, it yeah. should have some kind of length to it, if that <laughs> right. made any sense. <laughs> right. It's like it goes back into the 90s. Going limp. That's Appreciate what we that used to one. call it. Um, that makes sense to me. It's like it's all scrunched up and you need to roll it all out in order to Correct. press it and make sure that it is Correct. back to where it was right. prior to when you were either sleeping or- Yes. And from the health aspect, now how does that help us through health and, mu- and building muscles? It improves circulation. Because there's no more little uh, potholes in the ground, so to speak. The cement guys came and they paved the road. <laughs> mm. You understand? I, I totally understand that. And it, it definitely registers in my brain for sure about if you're trying to have longevity too, stretching is such a huge, it becomes even more important down the Absolutely. road. Absolutely. So short muscle could lead into a debilitated muscle too. And a debilitated muscle, a weakened muscle, what can that turn into? What we're going to get into soon, a postural imbalance. Oh, suck. And injuries. Hey, why do you think I'm sitting all crooked? I got one too. I'm yeah. working on it though. <laughs> Shit is I know what to do to correct it. But sitting doesn't help. I'm doing it for you. So even when I, cause I used to stretch a little bit more when I had, like I said, I had more time. So if I was training for something like a game or a sport. When did you stretch? I stretched when I was playing basketball a lot, always. But was it taking place before workout, during the intro? Always before. Anytime before I even touched the ball. That's what we're taught. Yeah. Before I even went and had done anything after the workout. Now, let's say if I'm not playing any sports, right? For instance, I'm doing it for, uh, just going into the gym for a hard workout. I stretch for about a solid two, three minutes. Nothing okay. more. I one, know I should be doing more. One single muscle? Or is this a duration of a bunch of muscles? A bunch of muscles. Oh, not that bad. So, but I try to do my best where I'm thinking in my brain, I don't want to cause injury to myself, but I also don't want to, like you were saying, the muscle just feels really tight. Yeah. And I don't want to go into a workout while it's really tight because it starts to hurt now. In different shot, places that I never knew about. Yeah, you could probably tear. You gotta be careful. Yeah, and so exactly. So hitting something like a fifth rep on a heavy weight, and that's my max for the day. It's gonna start to really hurt on that second rep. I already feel the pain, especially if I'm relating it to hamstring curls or something like that. Absolutely, I feel the pain really pulling. But after I do, before I do a stretch into the workout, I feel a lot better, and that's why I said it registered in my brain when you said it's elongating it and it's pulling it out. So it makes sense for if you're talking to general public. That registers for me. Can we make a little more sense out of that too? Yeah. You know why you had that tightness in your, your, your hamstring while you're doing leg curls? Tell me. It subsided as you did leg curls, didn't it? Yeah. You had knots in him. You had knots. It's, it's, it's inflammation. They're inflammation that kind of clog in between certain segments of the muscle that impede blood flow. Sometimes they take the shape of little friggin' lumps. You might think you got a cyst in you. And you do. You got a bunch of inflammation. It's like going over a rocky road. So that... That knot, that adhesion, scar tissue, mm. right? When you create movement, you're still inviting blood flow. Maybe at a slower rate, but it's going to get there. Like a four cylinder will always catch up to a six, but a six not so quick, right? Movement and resistance is what's breaking it up. But as time goes on, when you're feeling that, ah, the first few reps before that, that main set comes and dissipates it, that might, be, that might be the point where it's too late. You understand? So I how do. Could, 
how can we get around that? Let's foam roll in the beginning, right? Let's dynamically stretch other muscles around the hamstring that might be shuffling their tightness and going, you know, I'm tired of being tight in here. Can we please take residency somewhere else? He don't want to stretch anyway. Fuck him. And it goes, it travels around. It goes south to the hamstring. Hamstring goes, help, help. And you're rolling the hamstring, but it's still there. Because you haven't found out where the eight ball is. You know what you're so good at? Because even when we were doing workouts together, and we still do, but when I was doing some shoulder presses. Correct. You were like, I, I feel like there's something wrong. I don't see your arms going back far enough where they should be. And I said, I feel good. I don't feel any problem. And you're like, come here a second. And you went and pinpointed something in my back or my shoulder blade that I had not known was there at all. Coliseum. Feel it. Coliseum. Gym. It was in Coliseum. Yeah. yeah. And you pressed up against it and I went, wow, where did you find that knot? I didn't even know I had one because I didn't feel anything. But you saw it by looking at me. And then we started to do some stretching from it. Started to pull, and I do that now too. You pull the shoulder blades back, and and make sure that they're you hear the cracking, but you're also making sure that you're stretching your chest out, Correct. stretching your shoulders out. That really helped because it it figured out the problem, got the knot out, and then I was able to feel way better. I was able to get better workout, better stretch. Wow, how did I know that? Tell me. I didn't know that. It was I amazing. Said it's it's going to be a multitude of things. Yeah. So I said to him while he was doing, all right, guys, he was doing shoulder presses and Coliseum Jid. Shout out to them in Ridgewood, Queens. They are a fantastic club. I would fantastic. highly recommend going Especially there. Especially if you like high level stuff. Yeah. So Johnny was doing seated pressing. And when he says to me, I didn't feel the problem. I don't know what it was because he was so numb and used to it. When he's so used to pain, when you work so hard, you don't know any other way how to work less in the gym. So when he sat down, I says, only one thing could, one thing out of speculation could keep him, why is he doing this? He's not pushing through yeah. his thoracic spine. That's wraps around. I said, wait a minute. He must have tight lats. So what I did, yeah, I tight lats. went around, I stuck my knuckle into one of the rotator cuff muscles that sits underneath his shoulder. It was super painful, but after getting past that part of the pain, it was just it freeing. Because it opened up. It was amazingly free. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and these are the stuff. This is stuff that I don't know, and a good eye would would be able to detect that. Crucial eye. Yeah, someone that's definitely zoned in. I mean, that's where I found the benefits of any type of stretching. I know we all stretch because we're told to, and it's good for you, and you need to do your um, walking after you do a big leg workout. It's it's better for you to kind of um, get the blood black flowing through it, yeah. breaking up all that lactic acid that you just did, right? Dissipate it, yeah. And so I feel like. How do you know if you're stretching properly? How do you know? I mean, without looking at videos and stuff like this, and that can mislead you somewhere that you can maybe injure yourself. Movement. How can you test yourself? Movement. So if I'm still moving tight, I probably, I probably didn't stretch properly. Or I, didn't, I didn't stretch the proper surrounding muscles causing the problem. So it's identifying it. If you can't identify, <laughs> you can't fix it, can you? Right? That's one way. I think I know what you were getting at, though. How do you know... A, from a mirror point of view, that you're stretching properly. Yeah. Well, you know something, you're never gonna know until you do it re repeatedly under a positive influence who knows who he or she, what they're doing. Because when you do it correctly, this is how I could tell you, you do know you're doing it right. We'll get to how you don't know. When you're locked in up here, for example, if I'm doing a hamstring stretch, I gotta realize I'm going down to the lowest part of my body from the ground up, right? So I gotta create power. So I got to press into the ground with my two feet. Automatically, that causes a multitude of strength that travels up your chain, tightens up your hamstrings, tightens up your glutes. And that's what they mean when they see. Lock it down from the, low, from, from the lower end. You're going to throw a punch, a boxer, lock it down from the lower end. Loosen up your hips. And it's hard to do because I've, I've gotten used to it much more now, but it's still a little, I still have to register that in my brain. Even if I'm doing a bench press, I'd say, okay, John lock your feet and plant them on the ground because it's going to come from there up where they used to be kind of dangling all over the place. Create, load up on the floor. I mean, what the hell does that mean? It sounded like a little perverted when they say load up on the floor. Load up, generate power from the bottom of your feet. For Christ's sakes, it comes from the lower end up, right? Yeah. Create, understand your glutes is where, is where you generate all your horsepower. Why not take advantage of that? Just step into the ground. That's all you got to do. And everything travels up and it causes a connection then you know you're stretching properly. Because once you're dialed in, if I dial your number right now and order dial, it's going to come up, right? Dial the damn thing in here. When you dial it in here, everything elongates. Everything opens up. Because you know your body's in sync with, your brain is in sync with your body. So it's only going to flow one way, mm. the direction you're teaching it to flow. 
And now pushing through those and you've done your success with, with stretching, you feel good about yourself, you did your workout. Yeah. Now let's talk about active recovery. Okay. I love, I love that, that one. I love because that one. Because I was doing active recovery for years, but I didn't know what the heck the term was called because either one, I was just too lazy to look it up. Or number two, I was just doing what felt good for my body. Yeah. And as we talked more, especially this year, you're like, oh, you know, I bet you didn't know you were doing active recovery. And I, I went, remember that. that makes sense to me I because I told you I was doing high intensity sprints where you, if not, you know, I don't know what that is. Basically, I would run as fast as I can with at top speed for 10 seconds and then walk, it's power intense. walk for 50 seconds and then wow. r- rinse and repeat for as many as I can do. I usually try to do about 12 to 15. Wow. Sometimes if I feel good, I go to like almost 20, but that's even pushing it for, for a day where I feel like I'm off. But my legs are completely shot from the day before from doing the leg workout. Squatting, yeah. I do an active recovery and boom, automatically the next day, I feel I feel recovered. I feel way better. But you wouldn't think that. You'd say, oh, let me pause and give myself a day or two off, which is true. You need that time off after legs, yeah, right? Yeah. But doing that active recovery, those, those sprints, not only helped shape them and be more defined, it didn't tax me. I wasn't burning too many calories. It only took me about 15 minutes. But the first one or two sprints hurt like hell. Then just- after that, it was completely fine. Feeding it to my next question, I was going to say, That's how, hard, bro. How, how did you feel when your first few reps? Why don't I hear you so say- So much pain. So much pain. Yeah. And then I want to say, well, how did it, how did it work out for you? Well, I felt Stop. like cinder blocks was attached to my ankles. But ultimately? Point. Ultimately, then it became light as a feather. Are you asking me to explain that? Yes. I can. So, you tell me, Zap. <laughs> when yeah. you train and your muscles are sore from breaking down muscles, people ask, what is that? What do you think is in there? It's acidic blood. Acidic blood. That's where lactic acid, that, that term was coined. Well, what's acidic even blood. T- talking on that, the lactic acid buildup, right? Yeah. I know people go and refer to this term, all these like prodigies and gurus <coughs> like, oh, you got lactic acid buildup. But no, everyone was like, oh yeah, I understand you. And then they have question marks afterwards because they're like, what, what the hell is lactic acid buildup? It's just an accumulation of a byproduct, a waste product that accumulates in your blood. It's very acidic and it's toxic. It's indicative that the muscle will be sore the day or two later, unless it's post-onset muscle soreness, DOMS, delayed onset muscle soreness, sorry. Regardless, you're going to be sore. So I'm so interested in this new strength training, me personally. I've taken a step away from big muscles and want to get and become involved more with human bodily movement, moving laterally like this guy. I never knew he ran. He was a runner. I was like, I thought you were a bodybuilder. I thought you guys could belly wipe your ass. And he told me no. <laughs> right. And I watched him run. This guy moves. So getting back to lactic acid, it's just something that builds up. Me becoming more involved with strength training, that they said a muscle what's, what that is hit more frequent will grow and mature quicker, right? Because you're hitting it more consistent. Just like studying every day, you become an ace at what you do, right? Passionate. Okay. But how do you do that when the muscle's sore? So. This is where active recovery comes in. I was like, active recovery. I love this term. It just sounds, it sounds really. It sounds really cool. Like very really sporty, cool. right? Yeah. yeah. It sounds like, I don't know. Yeah, it does sound really sporty. Yeah, it's, it's really cool. So I looked into it. I'm like, active recovery. And I'm still stuck in that mindset where they say active on a, a resting day. They don't, they don't call hand in hand. Same. I had to break out of that. So I realized something else though. Why do you need recovery? Because when you break down a muscle, you're causing se- you, uh, central nervous system damage. Right, but when you're doing active recovery, baseball, I love doing football, basketball, you're stimulating more of your cardiovascular respiratory system. So you're actually conditioning yourself. And in the in the interim of doing that, the process of doing that, from the movement, the natural bodily movement, not the added resistance. When I got a ninety pound dumbbell in my hand, we did that. Remember, that's why we saw right now the functional movements of dunking a basketball. In my case, pull. Ken Griffey, smacking a home run out of the ballpark, whatever, handball, you're actively recovering because you're removing lactic acid through movement. And that's what it basically oh, is. It's you, removing, get rid, getting rid of that lactic acid buildup. You, you, can you kill, you're killing two birds in one stone. You're dissipating the lactic acid, thus allowing you to get into the gym again and train the muscle more frequent. And number two, you're moving. You're, create, you're moving. You're keeping muscles open and primed to fire for the next day. 
Maybe you're doing legs the next day. You don't even realize by doing active recovery, laterally moving, your hip caps are opening up more, which means your hip flexors should be open as well. So all muscles are going to fire on all cylinders. How could that be bad? This is a win-win situation. Well, plus I will say, I feel as if some of the stuff that I've been seeing is this is the new thing and new that new person, fitness, quote unquote expert has now discovered this for the first time. And now I'm the preacher of this. And did you not know that? How could you not know that? And I hate that. I hate when Can't stand people that. just go after someone else to make themselves feel bigger than the other person yeah. because there's no real there's no reason for it. I think that's a number one insecurity it and, is. and it's an ego problem Fence mechanism. that is so prevalent in this business and in fitness world where it's like who's you know you know whose lower half is going to be bigger than the others in a sense right when they call it a dick a dick matching contest they do they they, oh, they okay. do call it that but for, for purposes that we're talking about too it's the same thing it's it's an ego battle right so crazy. It's such an ego battle. Look, just nourish me. Tell me what I need to know. <laughs> yeah. And so this thing I would has do been around you. a long time. Yeah. You know, people have been using it for a long time. I'm new to it, I will admit, because I didn't know the term. Right. But generally, it's something that I was inclined to do because I, it was part of my training and I felt like I needed to get more conditioned, is what you actually said. And, right. it, actually, and it made me more conditioned. And it progresses even when I'm in the gym because I... I take a limited time schedule down. I try to cut workouts into about 40 minutes is my threshold. And I try to really move at a high speed pace. And I attribute it to that conditioning that I was doing in my off days. Let me ask you a question. Yeah. What was your choice of active recovery? What, what, what interested you? What did you do? I always liked the wind sprints. They call them wind sprints. You're just sprinting at high speed, right? Okay. Um, I really was interested in it because I wanted to get the rectus femoris muscle out on my muscle on my leg oh, for a contest. That separation. Yeah. And I said, you know, how am I going to do that? And so I saw that it tied into my hip flexor. And I said, okay, I can only do as much um, you know, um, leg extensions and squats, but something just wasn't Clicking. working. Yeah. As soon as I started to do that, I was activating that muscle as what the sprint was first wow. as I was running. And I saw that it was generating that growth for me and I just kept embracing it. Plus it was really hard oh, sure. and it still is kind of hard yeah. when I do it. Not kind of, I guess it's hard. You're still monster. dialed in when you do it though, right? I'm super dialed in. It's, awesome. it, it's a great release too. It's great actually for positivity <sighs> and reinforcing that positivity. <laughs> See, you, you I'm need so an active damn recovery. tight, man. There's no right way to sit when you I, get, no, get I imbalances. Feel like we need to get you an active recovery day today. say I had an imbalance. <laughs> Not up here, but no, but I felt, debatable. <laughs> I felt so great being out there. Um, yeah. It's a good thing to do to be active outside. Like I, like I said, it always preaches and motivates with positivity. It starts from there. But yeah, I definitely dial myself in, not to the point where I'm going to squat 315 on my back or something like that. You know, it's you more, yeah, it's more of a going out and saying, I'm going to have fun today. I'm going to go out and have fun. That could be something on how you look at this kind of stuff too, is stretching and corrective imbalances. Go outside, stretch a little bit, do a, do a couple of wind sprints. It'll take you 15 minutes. And guess what? You just think about 30, 15 to 30 minutes of exercise, depending on your walk back and forth to your house Absolutely. and your stretching combined with that time. Absolutely. And there you go. That's your activity. And it'll spiral into a positive uh, movement for you by doing that kind of stuff. Do but yeah, have fun with it. Do whatever you like to do, basically. Any kind of passions, hobbies, interests, sports. I, I love sports. I grew up being a baseball pitcher and a shortstop, and I can never get out of that range laterally of movement that you don't see in the gym too often. So that's another reason why it appealed to me to do active recovery. I figured I'll train like an athlete on those days. That's perfect. There's no added resistance. So yeah, to each his own. Yeah, absolutely. To each his own. And just being able to understand that what works for you is going to be best for you it's not something that is supposed to be tagline that you need to go and do because yes. someone else said it yeah. or because someone else is quite frankly pressuring you to do it if oh. you're not an athlete like how we are that's where we base the foundation off of that's where it all began Athleticism. you don't have to be you don't have to do these kinds of things you can go out and freaking go for a walk who knows but it i feel as if Today's life and society is so ingrained to either having a phone attached to your pocket to where it's burning a hole. It might as well be, you know, assimilated into your body at this point. And, and you can doing? call upon it at, at will outside of, your, outside of your consciousness. But I feel we're so ingrained with our phones so and we're so into our screens that people just walk 
and buried in their phone while they're crossing the street and they wonder why they get hit by a car. I mean, see, it's crazy. I see it all the I don't time. Mean, I don't mean to be too extreme, but it's, I just feel like nobody's getting out there anymore. No. Nobody's interacting it, anymore. It Nobody controlled. is pushing themselves it's anymore. It's a very controlled um, environment, it yeah. seems like. And computers. I was a culprit of that for, for a while because of dealing with depression or anything like that. And it happens, but you have to reach out. You have to reach out and be able to be open-minded in order to push yourself in a, in a positive direction with that stuff. So stretching is super important. It helps motivate that. You can even do it in your house. Yes. And it will help for the longevity of your life, for sure. Um, I want to switch to a topic that you'd really be helpful with, which is training uh, in your later years versus training Earlier. in your younger years. Wow. And what the differences are with that. <sighs> There's a whole host of them. So training when you're in your 20s, is even more different than being 18 or 19. You start to see the toll, 22, 23, 24. Not the major still, still right on, right on a smooth road. Once in the blue, admire bump. What are those bumps? Bumps are, sometimes you, you wake up, it's so un, unidentified why you feel tight, but the minute you move, it dissipates so quick because of your youth that you don't have time to really figure out, oh, that's the problem. It just, it happens, you notice it, it goes away. Oh, that was odd. It becomes a repeated pattern is what I'm saying, right? Understood. And you hear 32, 33. Now, that little thing takes longer to dissipate, causing the brain to go, I should look at this a little freaking closer. Because now I noticed, wait a minute, this takes me back in retrospect. That used to hurt me all the time, but it went by quick. Now it's hurting longer. Maybe you should go consult a physical therapist and see what's going on mm. and start adding some things to your program design. Like I do now in my 40s. Now it's very different. I mean, I'm just as strong, maybe not as many reps, as many reps, but that's okay. You trade one thing in for another. I got to get more condition. It's just perfect. Just like you were saying, it's not about that one rep max right. anymore about proving something in the gym because it's something we all, we're, look, we're men, right? It's, it's part of our ego. We have to have something to prove all the time, right? We kind of have to learn to quell that at certain stages. That's, but That's at, correct. But at the same time is you want to make sure you go in there and you're maximizing now your potential for what you have, but you're not, you're, you're trying to risk, not risk that injury. And you're also trying to make sure that you're getting in a sufficient enough of a gain that yeah. you want to see visually for yourself. I wish I could take it to think that way because I tend to defy the odds sometimes. Sometimes when you create a certain mind frame, it's very hard to go away. What did they say? Old habits die hard, right? Yeah. So um, all I know is warrior mode. And I'm getting away with things so far that people question all the time, man, be careful, be careful. You're in your 40s now. Should you be doing this still? says it's if i don't do it it's going to be a big problem i also think there's the other side of the coin with that too where people are afraid to go into venturing that because of the stigma of saying hey i'm 48 years old now now i shouldn't be doing these crazy squats and stuff like that but it doesn't mean you shouldn't squat period it, it yeah. i feel i've heard that so yeah. much in the gym from people like oh i'm way too old for this number one you're not too old okay yeah number two is that you know your own limits yeah. But you shouldn't eliminate something completely from your regimen unless you have an injury that you're dealing with, unless you're watching out for something on your body that you need to be careful for. Worst thing to do. Yeah. I stepped aside at one point from squatting, thinking, hey, my legs got so big anyway. It didn't make a difference. How much bigger can I get? I look like something weird. Right? Like, a, like a Tom Platt. I look like, who knows? Best legs like. in the I business. I don't know, man. Something like a freaking panda bear. I don't know. <laughs> Panda bed with a hiatal hernia, you know, in the stomach. The visuals are so ingrained, I guess. Right? <sighs> yeah. So what I what I have noticed though is um I have to do more what do people call that? I know what I call it. Cueing in exercise to cue the muscle in. Like a, is it a mind muscle connection you're talking about with that? It's a mind it's proprioception, they call it. That's a neuromuscular activation that you you're it's a signal. You're neurologically sending from your brain, your neurons, into mm -hmm. your muscles. So you're connecting with it. The relationship yeah. could stay in sync. Yep. So your body has a whole relationship. You got to connect the dots to follow the next It doesn't time. work for me if I don't do that by understanding that I'm going in there and I have to. That's why sometimes if you're doing stuff, you see bodybuilders mostly that do it where they have a work and on a tank top. I mentioned that. But it really is making that mind-muscle connection to saying, I need to not... You, admire the bicep that's going up and down yeah of course maybe you're doing that because you want to do a certain pose or something like that aside from that you can kind of tell when people are doing it to say i need to make that mind muscle connection because we've pointed this out in gyms before 
where you're like, yeah, that guy, he's got the mind muscle connection going. And I said, yeah, I see it. Cause you sense a vibe and you see the vibe, you know, he's there to work. May I ask you a random question? Yeah, definitely. When you're in the gym, right? And you're doing a barbell curl. Yeah. And you're very locked in with your proprioception. You're very focused. How do you feel about that one person who's can, can encounter your proximity? Yeah. Stop curling going. Ah! Ah! <laughs> ah! How do you feel about that? Honestly, do you it, feel uh, bad for the person? Do you say it's a lack of a connection? Or do you see a person who might have got hit a lot when you were a kid? Well, here's how I look at it. Because <laughs> <laughs> look, it's it's a it's a gym, it's an open space. It's bound to happen, especially if you are have competed, if you look a certain way. I feel like the visual perception is first, okay? Mm -hmm. And then next comes the ego. And I feel like those two combined can either create two different things, right? They can create something in the gym when that happens where you're like, you laugh at it and you're saying, okay, I understand. I invite a little competition and this is fun. It makes the gym more exciting. Or you can go a different way and then go, and then go back at the same person by doing this, a different rep. What happens with me though, <laughs> is I usually look over and I try to bring a smile on that person's face because oh, maybe he has something going on. Maybe stuff, he or huh? she has something going on, right? Oh. It, I go into a way where if I can maybe make that person laugh, then I can go over and just give him a fist bump because it's okay, man. You know, things are, it's not going to affect my pride or anything like that because I've been there, done that. I know what that feels like. And I can't say that I haven't done it a couple of times before. <laughs> <laughs> you you <I> criminal <laughs> looking up i have done it before okay but oh, that's great. it was in the means of all fun and games i don't i don't try to take it as serious as people think it is i take my body serious that's different you know i i eat certain ways i feel certain ways i'm yeah. not afraid to I'm, I'm a big foodie so i'm not afraid to eat what i like right. right but at the same time is i know i can only tolerate my body can only tolerate two or three days of maybe eating a certain way and then i have to revert back to what i know because it's a consistent thing and i feel better wired that way but at the same time is yeah i i don't take it too serious when something like that does happen because i know it's it's an ego thing and i've i've i feel that i've seen it happen so many times to myself and i just try to make a make a fun game out of it yeah, just, and other times i just acknowledge it and i just say okay I'm not going to let it impede on my progress because that does not. happen. A lot of these people that do that want to get into your head to impede your progress on yeah. that mind muscle connection and disconnect it. And then right. they realize that, okay, I've done my job now. I've become superior than you, which is this ego trip. Uh, misery loves company. It's just, it just doesn't make any sense for me, but I just lock myself in because I'm, my mind is so focused. I have no other way of thinking when yeah. I have a big wig in front of me. Yeah, yeah. I don't care what's going on next to me. Yeah. I don't care what's going on in, in back of me. I only care about what I'm about to do because if I break that connection, I cannot go and attempt it. I right. cannot go into that workout. That connection is, is destroyed. I understand. But to put a cap on that, let me tell you what happens when that happens to me. Yeah. I bring this up because many men ask me this too. All it's the time. a huge, it's a huge, you see it all but the time. Any gym you go into, you'll see it. Sometimes they come over to me like an altered emotional state. Like someone broke into their car, like they're asking for advice. So you advices. know what? <laughs> advices. <laughs> so it stood in my back of my head, always like in my subconscious wondering, I wonder why they feel like that. So one day it happened to me. And strangely, I reacted. But this is how I reacted. I saw it and I converted it to energy. He, the more he, ah! The more he did that, the, sl <laughs> the slower I executed my form and the harder I, gl I glossed at myself. So it dialed you in even more. And he started looking, excuse me. He started doing jumping jacks after that, I think, to get my attention. I said, this guy's really out of his mind. I said, I forgive you for whatever happened to you. And I moved to the other end of the gym. Sometimes they follow. <laughs> did, so, so I was just curious about it because guys ask me that. Yeah. I see no validity in that. I'm like, what are you saying? Why are you watching other people? Watch yourself. But one day I caught on to it. I says, wow, there's merit to this shit. Look at this guy. It is. It's, it's an energy thing. I mean, every time we train in, in a gym, we always, I know the first thing we always say to each other, aside from, okay, we have a plan to attack certain weights and yeah. we're going to go here and here and here and Gotta have all a plan. this stuff. Game always plan, have to have game a plan, plan. Right? Yeah. And, but we, the first thing we usually say is, hey, John, do you feel any bad energy around here at all? No, no, I feel like it's good. What about that area? Yeah, I don't know. I feel something off in that area. Okay, let's stay away, let's stay away from that area for right now because it invites this, 
it invites that vibe. Disturbing energy into yeah, your force field. Yeah, invites that vibe into you. The and reason, I'm all about different energies and stuff. Yeah, the reason I say that too is because sometimes I work out with John from time to time. And um, we're very strong empathic people. So we kind of feel vibes. When you walk into a gym, I guess I'm used to walking into something where there's being work being done. And I'm walking once in a blue, I feel like something. The minute you look into a gym, remember, you could see what they can't see from the outside on the inside. I see people moving and working. And as we come in there sometimes, it seems like, you ever see like a horror movie, it goes slow motion. Yes. It seems like there's antics and people stop what they're doing and they do weird shit. Yeah. Almost like they look at you like, what it's are you doing here? The out of character stuff we were talking about. It's it's just added, because it's you're strange. absorbing. This is energy because yeah. people are energy. Yeah. So what they're feeling is aligning with whatever they're, they're sending out there into the universe. And I'm saying this person is not doing what... You, you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, I do. So just to see if it's me, I'll say, John, I should walk in. Do you feel anything weird with the energy? If you say no, I'll say it's all in my head. I should change yeah, my diet. My pre-workout is getting the best of me. Don't do caffeine. <laughs> but 95% of the time, I would say, is that I say, yeah, I do. Or no, I don't. And then you agree. Okay. Moving on. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> now I know we're insane. <laughs> yeah. Well, with that said, this is going to close out our episode for today. I had a lot of fun talking about this kind of stuff. Uh, I We enjoy it so much. And you can tell we just have a blast doing it. And uh, sometimes I'm not afraid to feel uh inadequate because you know we're just w listen we're just talking about things that we encounter in our lives and uh things that we believe and we hold hold true to us but if you feel like there's stuff that you want to express like i said we always say leave it in our comment section subscribe to us on youtube training gain podcast we'll be on spotify as well as apple uh podcast yeah. and we have our patreon as well as our merch store coming soon but definitely let us know how you feel. I'm John Kioskrigis. You can follow me on Instagram, J under, John underscore. <laughs> I'm going to say, I need to reveal my passwords here. John underscore Kioskrigis. I already got hacked. Now we're devised. You don't do that. <laughs> no, we don't want that happening anymore. I'm John DePaulo. Unique underscore physique 23 is my Instagram. Ask me any questions. Like he said before, we live for this stuff. We, we really do. There's some people who do it because they do it. Some do it with our heart. That's John and I. Yeah, I agree. It's it's something that we have always held near and dear. And quite frankly, it saved my life. This uh, being involved in fitness, being involved in training. It took me out of a place that wasn't healthy and brought me into a place that is very healthy. And if it's if you're going to be addicted to something, be addicted to your body and your own health. But don't go overboard. You know, give yourself a break every once in a while. Don't take it too, too serious. But just follow your own, follow your own due diligence. You know yourself. And uh and hopefully we can provide some insight. So thank you for joining us. Create a plan for yourself. It works. Plans are huge.